Now let's go live to the briefing on the audit outcomes for the department and state-owned companies to the Portfolio Committee on Public Enterprises. Conduct ...and take disciplinary action against members of the executive if warranted. This in instruction occur accords with the shareholders' responsibility in instances where boards fail to act appropriately on such allegations. Should boards fail to heed these directions, the shareholder has the right to intervene. Allow me to take a spe sp uh, step back again. And just completing the, 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 the discussion I had earlier about what happened, for example, with ESCOM in 2014, it, um, and it was happening at a time while the economy was bleeding. Today, I can say that ESCOM is on a path of a stable balance sheet. The biggest remaining challenge is the lack of adherence to proper governance. And we intend to address collapse in governance and internal controls before the end of the financial year, including the SIU investigation. The SIU investigation is critical to restore public and investor confidence in ESCOM and its procurement processes. It will deal with the two issues that the AG has raised today, I'm sure, and that is procurement and contract management, and will do, deal with the, those issues um, in relation to a number of the companies that ESCOM has given contracts to over, over the period. To, to finally put this matter to rest, the company must recruit new executives and st strengthen their disclosure system to prevent executives and other staff and their families of doing business with the companies. I'll come back to this matter much later in the week. In this regard, I intend to arrange an ESCOM special general meeting in November to appoint a permanent board. The advertising process for the new board members of state-owned companies closed on the 8th of September, and candidates are currently undergoing a vetting process. Among the new board's first mandate will be um, the appointment of a permanent group chief executive and restoring the credibility of its operation. In the meantime, I've asked Mr. Corzo, who is the interim chair, to ensure that all internal disciplinary procedures relating to allegations of wrongful conduct at the utility are concluded prior to the special general meeting. You will also have noted statements from the special investigation units over the past 48 hours to the effect that with the Department of Public Enterprises, it has agreed on the terms of reference for an investigation into ESCOM governance and procurement the SIU has agreed to expedite the McKinsey Trillion aspect of the investigation. The proposed terms of reference will now be sent to the presidency for approval and the issuing of a proclamation. The speed of the effort to address these issues will not appease those paying for immediate shedding of heads in the public square on the basis of leaked email correspondence. But it's not as simple as playing a board game. The last time I looked, people were still entitled to be regarded as innocent until proven guilty, or otherwise. Appropriate procedures articulated in the Companies Act, State-owned Company Enabling Acts, and the Memoranda of Incorporation, among other legislative and regulatory pres prescripts, must be followed. Besides the fact that some would like to see state-owned companies privatize and others are using the companies as a site of preference for political contestation, I believe we have a common desire to see our valuable assets well managed and providing maximum possible benefits for all. Um, barring ESCOM, which received a qualified audit, the other state-owned comp companies in my portfolio with the exception of SA Express, and this um, I'm just very sorry about, because for 18 months um, we've just not been able to meet with National Treasury to actually conclude the deal around SAA, SA Express, and Mango. And National Treasury is running the process. 
And uh, I mean, so that's really, that, I mean, I, and I think, I, I really believe that unless we have a, we, well, we sell off about 25% of the collective assets and get a partner in and run with the process of creating a um, amalgamated um, airline we're in dire straits for SAA, SA Express, um, and Manga, of course, survives because it lives totally off SAA. It's the commercial arm of SAA. So I'm, I, I'm, I hope that we will get that one together quite soon. In fact, we've had a couple of meetings already, and I'm very grateful for that. So whilst I'm comfortable that Transnet, Alexcore, Safcol um, have all had um, not clean audits, but unqualified audits. SA Express uh, 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 achieved a qualified audit. And I'm, I'm comfortable with the way the state-owned companies have run in terms of audits. It does, mean, it does not mean that we must rest on our laurels, though. For 2017-18, I have tasked the DG with speeding up the filling of the vacant posts. We've got a 14% vacancy rate within the department. In fact, the vacancy rate is to do with the realignment of the department. And as soon as we get the realignment of the department... Um, up to speed, we would be able to deal with it because that would enhance our capacity for oversight. This would include building capacity within the department to analyze information received from state-owned companies and ensuring that information I submit to parliament and other parties would be credible and leg legitimate at all times. In fact, Chairperson, I'm, um, I ha have the DG with me. I have a set of officials who brought us to this space um, where we have a, a clean order today and we are ready for the questions that you have. Thank you.